in the grand theater of military technology, where the line between decisive advantage and spectacular failure is measured in micrometers of tolerance and milliseconds of processing speed. Every component is a testament to a nation's ambition. Every rivet, every composite panel, every line of code is a calculated move in a global chess match played with hypersonic pieces and invisible players. It is a domain where aesthetics are dictated by physics and survival, resulting in machines that are as terrifying as they are elegant. It is in this unforgiving arena that the Gong G11 or GJ11, codenamed Sharp Sword, made its public debut, not as a speculative prototype, but as an operational asset, gliding through the carefully choreographed pomp of a state parade. This was not a mere model. It was a statement of intent, a flying wing of matte gray composite that signaled a profound shift in the calculus of air power. The sensation it created was not just due to its sleek alien form, but the chilling realization of its purpose. A stealthy, artificially intelligent unmanned combat aerial vehicle, UCAV, designed for deep penetration strikes, capable of delivering a substantial payload to the heart of an adversary's most fortified sanctums without risking a single pilot. The subsequent display simulating a swarm attack was not just for show, it was a terrifying glimpse into the future of autonomous warfare. A future that, for the People's Liberation Army Air Force, has seemingly already arrived. The Sharp Sword is not a distant concept. It is reportedly in service, a covert dealer of destruction capable of carrying two tons of precision-guided munitions within its stealthy frame. The GJ-11 is the physical embodiment of a design philosophy wholly dedicated to low observability. It is a pure flying wing, a tailless, bat-like shape that represents the zenith of aerodynamic efficiency and radar cross-section RCS reduction. The absence of vertical stabilizers and a conventional empennage immediately eliminates a multitude of radar reflecting surfaces and right angles that plague traditional aircraft designs. Its dimensions are formidable, with an estimated wingspan of around 14 meters, placing it in a size class comparable to modern fighter jets. The leading edge of the wing is sharply swept, a feature that helps to deflect incoming radar waves away from the source emitter, scattering them rather than returning a clear signal. The trailing edge, however, is what sets it apart from many earlier flying wing designs, employing a complex cranked kite or sawtooth pattern. This serrated edge is not an aesthetic choice. It is a meticulously engineered solution to manage radar reflections and control airflow over the control surfaces integrated seamlessly into the wing's profile. The entire airframe is constructed from advanced carbon fiber composite materials, which are not only lightweight and strong, but also inherently less reflective to radar than traditional aluminum alloys. These composites are likely layered in a specific manner to absorb and dissipate electromagnetic energy. Over this advanced skeleton, lies the skin, a coating of radar absorbent material, RAM. This top layer is the system's first and most critical line of defense against detection, a notoriously temperamental and high maintenance feature of all stealth aircraft. One can only imagine the ground crews armed with specialized tools and a level of patience bordering on monastic, ensuring the integrity of a surface where even a minor scratch can compromise the entire mission, requiring more tender loving care than a prize-winning orchid. Beneath this carefully sculpted exterior lies the heart of the machine. Propulsion is provided by a single, non-afterburning turbofan engine, buried deep within the fuselage to mask its heat signature and physical presence from radar. The engine's exact model remains a state secret, but it is likely a derivative of the WS-13 or a similar domestically produced power plant, optimized for subsonic efficiency and reliability, rather than raw thrust. 
The most critical aspect of the propulsion system from a stealth perspective is its integration into the airframe. The air intake is not a simple forward-facing scoop, but a serpentine duct located on the dorsal side of the UCAV. This S-shaped duct conceals the highly reflective fan blades of the engine from frontal radar observation, forcing incoming radar waves to bounce multiple times within the ramline channel, dissipating their energy before they can be reflected back. On the other end, the engine exhaust is equally well hidden. The nozzle is a flattened, two-dimensional design, shielded from below by the airframe itself. This not only masks the hot engine parts from infrared sensors on the ground, but also allows the hot exhaust gases to mix more rapidly with the surrounding cold air, reducing the aircraft's thermal signature. This intricate system, while brilliant for stealth, likely comes at the cost of some engine performance, a classic engineering trade-off where invisibility trumps outright speed. The GJ-11 is a subsonic platform cruising at high altitudes where the air is thin, conserving fuel to achieve a considerable combat radius estimated to be well over 1,500 kilometers, enabling it to reach deep into contested territory. The entire craft is governed by a sophisticated triplex or quadruplex fly-by-wire system, an absolute necessity for a tailless flying wing which is inherently aerodynamically unstable and impossible to control without constant, minute, computer-aided adjustments to its control surfaces. It's a machine that is perpetually on the verge of falling out of the sky, held aloft only by a torrent of digital calculations, a testament to the prowess of its flight control software. The true purpose of the GJ-11, however, is not simply to fly undetected. It is to deliver ordnance. Concealed within the central body of the airframe are two internal weapons bays, situated symmetrically on either side of the engine core. Each bay is thought to be capable of housing approximately 1,000 kilograms of munitions for a total payload of two tons. This internal carriage is non-negotiable for a stealth aircraft as external pylons and weapons are massive radar reflectors that would instantly betray its position. The bays are likely designed to carry a variety of precision-guided munitions, from satellite-guided bombs like the LS-6 family to smaller specialized weapons. The ability to deploy anti-radiation missiles would make it a potent weapon for suppression of enemy air defenses, ESEAD missions, allowing it to autonomously hunt and destroy enemy radar installations, punching a hole in the defensive screen for subsequent waves of friendly aircraft. There is also speculation that the GJ-11 could act as a mothership, deploying smaller drones or loitering munitions from its bays, creating a complex, multi-layered threat. The name Sharp Sword, which sounds less like a piece of high-tech hardware and more like something from a fantasy novel's B-list weaponry catalog, is perhaps more apt than it first appears. It is not a blunt instrument, but a precision tool designed to be the tip of the spear, the first to penetrate and disarm the enemy. The mechanics of the weapon bay doors themselves are a marvel of engineering, designed to open, release the weapon, and close in the shortest possible time to minimize the UCAV's exposure to radar. What truly elevates the GJ-11 from a mere stealth drone to a revolutionary system is its brain. The level of artificial intelligence and autonomy integrated into its systems is believed to be exceptionally high. This is not a remotely piloted vehicle in the traditional sense, tethered to a human operator thousands of miles away. It is designed to execute complex missions with minimal human intervention. A mission plan can be uploaded and the UCAV can handle takeoff, navigation through contested airspace, threat identification and evasion, target acquisition, and weapon deployment on its own. This autonomy is crucial for its intended role. In a sophisticated electronic warfare environment, data links are vulnerable to jamming. A drone reliant on a constant connection to a pilot would be rendered useless. The GJ-11 is designed to complete its mission even if that link is severed, making independent decisions 
based on its programmed objectives and the real-time data from its onboard sensors. This brings us to the swarm capability showcased in a simulated attack. The concept involves multiple GJ-11s networking together, sharing sensory data, and coordinating their actions to overwhelm an enemy. One drone could act as a scout, identifying targets and threats, while others maneuver into attack positions. They could assign targets amongst themselves, ensure that a high-value target is struck by multiple drones simultaneously, or have one drone sacrifice itself by drawing the fire of an air defense system to allow another to strike. This cooperative, intelligent swarm behavior is a nightmare for defenders. A single stealth aircraft is difficult to track. A coordinated group of them, sharing information and reacting as a single entity, presents an exponentially greater challenge. The parade's seamless simulation of this was, of course, a best-case scenario, conveniently omitting the pre-flight checks that probably involve several hours dedicated just to booting the swarm's network without it deciding to unionize or elect a leader based on which unit has the cleanest RAM coding.